Do you know how the first plant cell was born? It all started in water, where a primitive aerobic eukaryotic cell was just chilling. One day, it swallowed a photosynthetic prokaryote, one of those tiny sugar-making bacteria. But instead of digesting it, the two became roommates. And over time, the sugar-making guest turned into a permanent member of the cell, what we now call the chloroplast. And boom, just like that, the first plant cell was born. A cell that could make its own food from sunlight, apart from carrying out all of other life functions. And from these single plant cells, the entire plant kingdom eventually unfolded. Want to see how? Let's go! Now, where were these new plant cells hanging out? In water, of course, because that is where they were born, right? And when lots of plant cells stuck together in water, that is when algae was born. And even today, most algae, they're aquatic. And that makes sense because alga are the simplest form of plants. Their body isn't differentiated into roots, stems or leaves. And for such a structure, water made their life easy. Floating in water meant there was no need for a rigid support. Nutrients and gases could easily diffuse in and waste products could diffuse out. And for reproduction, the sperm could just swim to the egg, right? The sperm could just swim to the egg. Something like this. But over time, actually millions of years, things got crowded in water. Nutrients were harder to find and there were predators all around. And light? You had to float near the surface to get enough. Meanwhile, just above the surface lay a vast untouched territory, a land full of sunlight and no competition at all. So over time, some algae near the edges, they started clinging onto damp rocks. They started clinging onto damp rocks. And this small step onto land opened up a whole new world. But living on land wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It had its own challenges. Without constant water, these algae, they could actually dry out. They could actually dry out. And without water to provide buoyancy, without water to provide buoyancy, they could actually collapse under their own weight. They could collapse under their own weight. And reproduction was really difficult for them because there was no water for the sperm to swim to the egg. So only the algae that slowly evolved land survival features, they made it. They became the protobryophytes, the first land plants. Now, with time, the protobryophytes, they evolved into bryophytes. And the bryophytes, they had root-like, stem-like and leaf-like structures. Not true root stems and leaves, but the basic layout. The root-like rhizoids helped anchor them to the soil and absorb water. The stem like seta, it helped them transport food and water. And the leafy bits, they helped in photosynthesis. You can think of bryophytes as land tourists who haven't quite let go of the water yet. And examples of bryophytes would be mosses, liverworts and hornworts. Now the bryophytes, they had two major challenges. First, they were short, so they struggled to get sunlight. And second, they were still tied to water for reproduction, so they couldn't colonize all of the land. They could only grow in damp, shady places. Now, to solve the first problem, that is not getting enough sunlight, they needed to grow tall. And for that, they needed a support system. And more importantly, a transport system to move water and food. And that is where some bryophytes got an upgrade and became pteridophytes. Pteridophytes had true roots, stems and leaves. And most importantly, they had a transport system made up of internal pipes called the xylem for water transport and phloem for food transport. Together these pipes, they formed the vascular bundle. And the vascular bundle meant that now the pteridophytes, they could grow tall and reach for that precious sunlight without having to compromise on water uptake or the transport of food. 
right? And examples of pteridophytes would be ferns, horse tails and club mosses. But one problem still persisted. Pteridophytes still needed water to reproduce. So they too were stuck in damp shady places. To fully colonize land, plants needed to cut ties with water for reproduction. And that meant two big changes. First, they had to stop relying on swimming sperm. In algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes, the sperm actually needed water to swim to the egg. Which meant no water, no baby plant. So plants came up with a brilliant solution. They packaged their sperm inside tiny protective cases and sent them off using the wind. And these cases, we call them the pollen grains. And with the pollen, plants didn't need water for fertilization anymore. They just needed some breeze. Second, they had to move from fragile spores to something more survival ready. You see, all this while in algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes, fertilization, that is when the sperm meets the egg, fertilization always led to the formation of spores. Now spores are useful, sure, but they come with a lot of problems. They are fragile, they have no stored food, no tough outer coat, and if the weather is too dry, they can die before they even get the chance to grow. And that is where seeds came into the picture. Seeds were actually a game changer. You know, seeds have the baby plant within them as the embryo. They have a protective coat and they store food to keep the baby plant alive until the conditions are right. And the pteridophytes that upgraded themselves to produce pollen and seeds became the gymnosperms. Gymnosperms didn't need water for fertilization and hence they could conquer land. Now the only issue that was still there is the fact that gymnosperms had naked seeds. That is their seeds were not enclosed in fruits. So those seeds were vulnerable. They were vulnerable and they could actually land anywhere, even in places where they couldn't grow well. So what's the solution? to wrap the seed in a fruit. That way, the animals who eat this fruit would disperse the seed, would disperse the seed, and that way the fruit or the seed will be dispersed in places, in the right places, where they can actually grow into a new plant. Now to form fruits, we would need flowers, and that is where the angiosperms or the flowering plants came into being. After fertilization, their flowers turn into fruits that enclose the seeds. You see, the flowers, they attract pollinators like bees and butterflies. And this increases the chances of fertilization. And fertilization leads to the formation of fruits. And fruits, they protect the seeds and help them spread. And just like that, angiosperms became the most successful and the most diverse group of plants on earth. So from algae to bryophytes to pteridophytes to gymnosperms and finally to angiosperms, it has been a long evolutionary road. And now when we classify plants, we are really just telling the story of how they slowly adapted and conquered land.